In the annals of history, there are rare individuals who in the face of overwhelming darkness shine as beacons of courage and conviction. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a most remarkable German pastor and theologian, was one such extraordinary soul who defied the iron grip of Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime. Dietrich Bonhoeffer's life unfolds as an extraordinary testament to his unwavering faith and unyielding conviction in the face of unspeakable tyranny. In an era cloaked and shrouded in fear and hatred, he chose the path of righteousness. Bonhoeffer's narrative transcends mere defiance. It is a compelling journey of faith's enduring strength and a moral compass that steadfastly points towards justice. Welcome to another episode of People's Journal. In today's episode, we explore the heroics of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian and pastor who would dare to defy Hitler and would try to have him assassinated. Before we continue, please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on more exciting videos like this one. Adolf Hitler, leader of Nazi Germany, persecuted the church and the persecution of the church was a systematic attempt to control and ultimately destroy the Christian churches in Germany. The Nazis saw the church as a threat to their power and ideology and took many steps to suppress it. One of the first things the Nazis did was pass a law allowing them to control the appointment of church leaders. This law gave the Nazis the power to remove any church leader they considered disloyal, one of the disloyal churches to the German government was the Confessing Church. The persecution of the church by the Nazi regime was a dark chapter in German history. It was a systematic attempt to destroy the church and silence its dissent voice. The Nazis were successful in suppressing the Confessing Church, but they were not able to destroy it. The Confessing Church continued to exist and played an essential role in the German resistance movement. Germany and the world experienced an apocalypse during the Nazi government. Due to their deeds, there was colossal oppression and desolations. The government even believed that Germany was authorized to have a living space in Eastern Europe or even Lebensraum. That was what led to the sudden attack of the Nazi government on Poland in 1939 and the beginning of World War II. Due to the distress caused by the Nazi government, Dietrich Bonhoeffer rose up and firmly opposed the government and its views. He was convinced that Adolf Hitler had to be stopped. Bonhoeffer's decision to resist the Nazis influenced his views on Hitler and the Nazi regime. He saw Hitler as a dangerous demagogue, leading Germany down a path of darkness and evil. He also saw the Nazi ideology of racism, anti-Semitism, and violence as a threat to the church and humanity. Bonhoeffer was part of a resistance movement in the early 1940s. He helped some Jews to escape the cruelty of the Nazi government and helped the other resistance members with physiological needs. Bonhoeffer's legacy deserves to be honored by history for his bravery and commitment to justice. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was born on April 4, 1906, in Breslau, Germany, now known as Poland. Born into an elite family of a psychiatrist, neurologist, teacher, lawyer, and scientist, Bonhoeffer was impassioned to receive a standard education that stimulated his curiosity and greatly influenced his competence to lead others around him, even in church. At the age of 14, he chose to pursue his study in theology, even though his brothers Klaus and Karl were against it. Bonhoeffer took Hebrew as an added course in school and was part of different ministerial gatherings sparked by the sorrows of war and repressed children. He started his studies at Tübingen and ultimately moved to the University of Berlin, where he submitted his excellent thesis, Sanctorum Communio. When he turned 21 on December 17, 1937, Bonhoeffer completed his doctorate in theology from the University of Berlin, finishing with the highest distinction. When Bonhoeffer finished his theological studies, he served a German-speaking assembly in Barcelona, Spain, 
From 1928 to 1930, he studied at Union Theological Seminary in New York from 1930 to 1931. Within that period, he attended Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem and was interested in racial unfairness. Bonhoeffer became functional in the Protestant ecumenical movement, creating global contacts that after 1933 would demonstrate pivotal for the confessing church and for his time in the German resistance. When Adolf Hitler ascended to power, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's German evangelical church entered a devastating phase in its history. Forcibly persuaded by patriotism and ambivalent by the problems of the Weimar years, many Protestant leaders and church congregations embraced the start of Nazism. According to a German pastor, Hermann Gruner, the time is fulfilled for the German people of Hitler. Because of Hitler, Christ, God the Helper and Redeemer, has become effective among us. Hitler is the way of the Spirit and the will of God for the German people to enter the Church of Christ. Another pastor mentioned, Christ has come to us through Adolf Hitler, a group called the German Christian, Deutsche Christen, 1 1933 advocated the Nazification of German Protestantism through the contrivance of a pro-Nazi Reich Church. The Christians in Germany wanted Protestantism to adopt the Nazi ideology, and they demanded the implementation of the state Aryan laws within the churches. The German Christians disputed the acceptance of the Jews as members of the Aryan German Church through baptism because of their racial differences. Although anti-Semitism and avidity for Nazism became expensive, most church leaders, including Bonhoeffer, were against the Aryan paragraph because it conflicted with the traditional doctrines concerning baptism and ordination. Many other pressures and motivations influenced Bonhoeffer's choice during the Nazi era, one of which was his Christian faith. He was a committed Christian who believed that everyone is created in the image of God and has inherent value and dignity. He was also rooted in the teaching of Jesus Christ, which emphasized love, compassion, and forgiveness. Those beliefs led him to oppose the Nazi regime, which he saw as evil and misanthropic. Bonhoeffer's personal experiences molded his choices. He witnessed the Nazi persecution of Jews and other minorities and was troubled by the regime's growing power. He also believed that the Nazi regime threatened Germany and the world. Also, he understood the responsibilities of the church in the society. Bonhoeffer believed that the church had the role to speak out against injustice and tyranny. He asserted that the state should not influence the church, but should be independent and critical. Bonhoeffer contended that it is unacceptable to surrender Christian precepts to political philosophies. Bonhoeffer said, if non-Aryans were not allowed to be part of the church, his fellow church leaders who agreed with him should resign and constitute a new confessing church that would not be influenced by the Nazi government. The German Christians had an extreme ideology and theology that sparked a rebound amidst more moderate Protestants, which led to the creation of the Confessing Church in May 1934. In Bonhoeffer's famous text, The Church and the Jewish Questions, published in April 1933, he addressed the issues countering his congregation under Nazism. He argued that National Socialism was an illegitimate form of government and, hence, had to be rejected on Christian grounds. Bonhoeffer defined three stages of this defiance. Foremost, the church was called to query state injustice. Secondly, the church was responsible for supporting victims of injustice, whether they were Christians or not. Conclusively, the church could be called to put a spoke in a wheel to stop the machinery of injustice. The paper revealed the complexity of Bonhoeffer's thoughts and actions. It was one of the earliest abnegations of the Nazi government, indicating Bonhoeffer's early opposition to the regime. The theological segment of the essay also contains the foundational anti-Semitic teachings that for centuries had characterized Christian understanding of Judaism, and he asserted that the Jewish questions would ultimately be decided through the conversion of the Jews. Bonhoeffer did not specifically desert this view.
Due to his bluntness concerning his political opinion, Bonhoeffer was isolated within his church, and throughout the 1930s, many of his activities were predominant abroad. Bonhoeffer consistently reported happenings in Nazi Germany to ecumenical Protestant leaders in Europe and the United States. At Sofia in Bulgaria in September 1933, during the Ecumenical World Alliance meeting, Bonhoeffer spoke about the Jewish question, and the delegates passed a resolution condemning the Nazi actions against the Jews. Thinking that would create a resolve, he took a copy of the solution to the German consul in Sofia to prove that Nazi policies were destroying Germany's image abroad. Still, the German evangelical church leaders in Berlin demanded that he recede from ecumenical activities. Despite the consul's rebuke against his actions, he refused. Bonhoeffer served as a pastor in many German-speaking churches in London from September 1933 to April 1935, leading them to break with the official German church and join the Confessing Church. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was initially an idealistic pacifist, but he began to shift his perspective as he witnessed the increasing violence and aggression of the Nazi regime. He saw how the Nazis were not only persecuting Jews, but also other groups, such as the Roma and people with disabilities. He also saw how the Nazis were preparing for war. These events led Bonhoeffer to realize that pacifism was not enough. He came to believe that it was necessary to resist the Nazis, even if it meant using violence. He helped to form the Kreisau Circle, a group of resistance leaders who plotted to overthrow the Nazi government. Bonhoeffer's shift from pacifism to realism was a difficult one. He knew that violence was not the answer, but he also knew that the Nazis would not be stopped without it. He ultimately decided to resist the Nazis, even though he knew it could mean his death. He started training young clergy members at an illegal confessing church seminary, Finkenwalde, close to Gestapo View, in September 1937. The following two years were spent by Bonhoeffer secretly journeying throughout eastern Germany to supervise his students, most of whom were working illegally in small parishes. The Gestapo banned Bonhoeffer from Berlin in January 1938. On March 12, 1938, Austria was subjoined into Nazi Germany. Pastors across Germany were ordered to take an oath of allegiance to Hitler in honor of his 50th birthday by April 1933. It is curious if Bonhoeffer took the mandatory oath. He might have taken part in the pledge to avoid discriminatory retribution by the Gestapo. Also, he was forbidden from public speaking in September 1940. Bonhoeffer was arrested by the Gestapo on April 6, 1943, due to skepticism about his involvement in the resistance movement. He was imprisoned at Tegal Prison in Berlin, where he was interrogated and tortured. He was tormented in an attempt to get him to confess his involvement in the resistance movement and provide information about other group members. Bonhoeffer was whipped, beaten, and deprived of sleep. He was subjected to standing naked in a cold cell for an extended period. Although Bonhoeffer endured torture, he denied confessing or providing information concerning his fellow resistors. He was rigid in his belief and refused to give in to the Nazis. He was later transferred to Flossenburg concentration camp in 1944. Hans von Donayi, Bonhoeffer's brother-in-law, introduced him to the group that plotted to overthrow Adolf Hitler. Dietrich Bonhoeffer had some specific contributions to the movement, like being involved in intelligence gathering. He worked for Abwehr, the German military intelligence agency, from 1939 to 1943. He used his influence to gather information about the Nazi regime's plans and passed it on to the resistance. He also rescued many Jews from Nazi persecution by providing them with false papers and helping them to escape to Switzerland. Bonhoeffer journeyed to Sweden and Switzerland in 1932 to meet with the church leaders and ambassadors to build foreign support for the resistance movement. 
He was also deeply involved in the July 20 plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler. He supported the planning of the coup and was present at Bendler Block on the day of the fling. In addition to his contributions, he played a general role in the resistance movement by giving moral and spiritual help to his fellow resistors. He believed Christians were responsible for resisting evil, even if it meant putting their lives on the line. Bonhoeffer helped recruit other resistance movement members, including the plot's leader, Klaus von Stauffenberg. He assisted in planning the coup and contacting to develop contingency plans in case of failure. On the day of the attempt, he coordinated the resistance. On May 19, 1943, Joseph Goebbels declared Germany free of Jews. In October 1944, after the arrest of his brother, Klaus, and brother-in-law, Rudiger Bonhoeffer was transferred to the Gestapo Prince Albrechtstrasse. The failed 20th of July plot prompted that. After his move from Prince Albrechtstrasse, within a week, beginning on April 3rd, Bonhoeffer was transferred from Buchenwald concentration camp to Regensburg and then to Flossenburg concentration camp overnight. On the 9th, 1945, still at the Flossenburg camp, he was hung to death early that morning. Sadly, Bonhoeffer's execution by the Nazis on April 9, 1945, happened some days before the end of the Second World War. His death was a significant event for many reasons. Foremost, it was a special reminder of the inhumanity of the Nazi government. He was a theologian and pastor who rightfully spoke against the woes of the Nazi regime, but through his execution, we can see that the Nazis were ready to kill anyone who would try to stop them. Furthermore, his execution was a testament to his bravery to carry on, despite danger and his intense dedication to his beliefs. He was ready to sacrifice his life to fight against the Nazi government and stand for his beliefs. Bonhoeffer's execution has had a lasting impact on the world. His name and work will be forever stamped on the sands of time as a hero of the resistance movement and a martyr for his beliefs. What he did inspires people worldwide to stand up for what is right, even in the face of significant risk. His death is a reminder that even in the darkest of times, people are willing to stand up for what is right. His execution is significant and relevant today because it reminds us to always be vigilant in the fight against evil and oppression. The legacy of Bonhoeffer as a result of the resistance movement is complex and multifaceted. His theological writings have influenced how Christians think about social justice. Bonhoeffer argued that Christians are called to active engagement in the world and must work to create a more just and equitable society. Bonhoeffer is recognized as a symbol of hope and resistance against tyranny. His story is a reminder that anyone can make a difference. Bonhoeffer was a crucial figure in the German resistance movement against the Nazis. He bravely put his life on the line to fight against the regime and protect innocent people from persecution. His example inspires people worldwide to stand up for what is right, even when difficult or precarious. And that is all for today's video. Thank you for watching until now. Be sure to like and subscribe so you get more exciting videos on this channel.